Today I give you the most hotly anticipated new synthetic reed on the saxophone and clarinet market. This is the Ven Reed by Didario, currently available for alto and tenor sax and clarinet. And the reason it is so hotly anticipated is that this is a groundbreaking new reed, which basically is a composite of three materials. It's got polymer strands running up and down the entire length of the reed, and it's got actual reed particles which come from Didario's factory, and it's all bound together in a magic resin, if you like. And the result is a really wonderful read that I'm gonna get into in this video. I'm gonna demo them for you. I'm gonna compare them against another very famous synthetic read. I'm just gonna talk geek stuff about this Venn read because I'm sure that you guys wanna know all about this. You've read about it over the last few years and finally it has been released. Now at this point, I should say that this is the generation two version. And a couple of years ago, at the start of lockdown approximately, they came out with the first version, Generation 1, which had quite a few mixed reviews. There's a few videos out there on it, and people didn't have maybe such great things to say about it. Um, but I think you'll find out during the course of this video that I am much more in favour of this Generation 2 version, where I believe they have changed the resin and it's significantly impacted the, the quality of the read. So we're talking a much different version with the release of the Generation 2. Um, so let's get into it. Lots of things to discuss. I want to talk about the strength comparison side of things, which is very important to you sax players out there. I also intend to do a comparison against my natural choice of cane reed. In this case, that's Daddario Select Jazz. And I'm also going to compare it against the other talk of the town in terms of synthetic reed releases, and that is the Legere American Cut reed, which is at a very similar price point to the Venn's. And I think it's going to wind up being the very popular competition for the Venn. So let's remind ourselves why we might want to consider moving to a synthetic reed in the first place. So when thinking about natural cane reeds, there are several things that we have to think of that may go wrong or just generally make the whole experience unpleasant for us. First of all, of course, they can be completely inconsistent from one reed to another. We've all the sax players had this experience where we get a box of 10 reeds and you pick out the first read and it basically doesn't work and then the next read is an absolute beauty or anything in between. The second thing is that natural cane reeds don't last nearly as long as synthetic reeds. You know, you might get 10 to 15 hours out of them uh, at the most. And even during that period of time, you might find that the performance completely changes from day to day. And then within that, of course, natural cane reeds can warp, they can crack, they need soaking in order to get them up to speed on any given day. So there's all sorts going on with cane reeds. With synthetic reeds, you just get a, that sort of assured um, absolute consistency. And I think that is the best word to use when describing synthetic reeds. Of course, it's another matter as to whether it is the reed for you or not, but you'll certainly get that assured consistency. And then beyond that, of course, they last a very long time. In some cases, 10 or 15 times as long as a regular cane reed. With that said, let's just get on and do the demos I have promised you, and then we will discuss afterwards. Thank <laughs> you. 
So I started out there with the Tenor Venreed, which I absolutely loved. I find that it's just got this warmth and kind of body and soul in the sound. And in addition to that, I find there's this extra sizzle in the sound, this kind of texture that runs throughout the sound at whatever dynamic level, which just gives it this sort of natural organic feel. And it's a feeling that I've never really had on any synthetic reed that I've played in the past. So I just love that side to, to Ven reeds, that there's something completely different that's going on here in the sound and the response uh, that you get from these reeds over and above anything I've tried before. Now, if you take the Legere American Cut reed, there is a similar quality there in that there's a sort of multi-dimensional thing going on where you've got this heart to the sound and you've got that buzz on top. But for me, with the American Cut, it's more of a marked buzz on top of the sound. You can really hear that cut. Um, somehow with the Ven, it's more that the, the heart and soul of the sound is, is the major aspect of it. And the cut it seems to be less of the thing. It's much more about that warmth of sound. You can certainly push the sound, but it doesn't to me feel like an overly bright sound. It feels more like a kind of thick, wadgy sound, um, which is wonderful. It's almost like find your best warm Rico Jazz Select reads, sorry, Dodaria Select Jazz reads, and that is what you get in a Ven read. So interestingly, talking of which, it was actually a Select Jazz read that I played at the end there, which is what's familiar to me. It's my normal read of choice. And it wasn't maybe the best example of a natural cane read, but we thought we'd leave it in there just so that you could see that of course, every read is different, you know, when you're talking natural cane. And so it's an appropriate um, comparison to actually have a read like that and compare with what is going to be a highly consistent synthetic read in the Ven and of course the Leger American Cut there as well. So yeah, I'll be interested to see what you guys think when you listen back. Of course, it always sounds very different when you're listening through computer speakers uh, to my feeling here in the room as I'm playing it to you guys. Um, but overall, just absolutely love the, the feel and the quick response to the Vem. I, I find it gives you all these different tonal colours, which I tried to demo there, you know, showing subtone, showing full tone. Um, when you're really putting a lot of air through the instrument, it retains this nice core to it. And at the same time, the subtone doesn't disappear from you. You know, sometimes when you play a subtone, it can get a bit weedy and all you can hear is air but I found that there was a, a good sort of um, transfer of sound waves into a, a really nice sort of delicious subtone. So I really love all those qualities. Altissimo it was hitting those top notes very nicely with a lot of power, as did the Legere. Um, and I think um, from what I remember, it was okay on the, on the cane read on the tenor. But moving on to the alto, we got um, a, a drastic fail there at the end on the, the cane read. Again, it's the select jazz I was using on alto. I thought I could do another take, but then I thought, you know what, let's just leave it there because that's how it was for me. Um, it, it worked perfectly well on the two synthetic reeds that I played beforehand, then I moved on to the cane reed and those uh, top notes didn't pop out. So probably quite useful to leave that in there so you can see that you just get this inconsistency um, with cane reeds. And overall on the alto, I felt that I was getting similar qualities um, to those of the tenor, the same kind of idea of that kind of real core sound that I really enjoy on the Ven. And then I did enjoy the Legere American Cut, um, but it's got, for me, it's got that extra buzz in there that I'm perhaps not so keen on. I can see it might be useful in certain contexts and, you know, if you're really trying to cut through in certain styles of music. Um, but yes, just that all rounded sort of warmth of sound and different tonal colors that you get in the Ven, it's very appealing to me. And then moving on to the cane reed, well, I don't need to say too much there because you hear me playing cane reeds all the time, but it's just important to have in there as a, as a yardstick for, uh, by way of comparison. Okay, so one of my other big observations during the last few days testing out the Ven reed was the notion that the reed, the Ven reed, stays completely flat. There's no curvature of this thin end here where it bends up towards the tip of the mouthpiece. And the reason I point this out is um, for a few days I was trying the Ven read and I just, I, I looked at my tip opening, I was thinking that just looks like a really big gap between the tip of the reed and the tip of the mouthpiece. And then I put on my cane read by way of comparison and the gap was much smaller. 
and then you take your cane reed, look, check it out on the side profile and you see that it is completely bent upwards. And so it's occurred to me that just even a few hours of breaking in a natural cane reed and we actually change the very structure of the reed whereby it bends upwards. So effectively, we're all actually playing on smaller tip openings than we think we are. And um, it's amazing the effect it has because, you know, for most people, if you play a tip opening seven and you put on a new reed, you look at that gap and it's quite big. Within a few hours, as, as I say, that gap will reduce and then it will sort of find that comfort point that we're used to playing. So in fact, when you use a Ven reed, you're always going to be having a bigger aperture than you would do otherwise with natural cane reed. And it's taken quite a while for me to get used to the idea that every time, every new morning I try out a Ven reed, I plug on the reed and I say, see this massive big gap and it feels like this fresh start and nothing's changing. It doesn't change, it doesn't break in in the way that natural cane reeds do. And so, you know, you need to think about this in some ways because you might find that the, in terms of the strength side of things, you might find your experience is actually, uh, that the reed ends up being a little bit resistant if you go for a strength that is equal to what you would normally play on with natural cane. So this brings me on to the strength comparison side of things. My initial experiences with the Venries were that I put on like a strength three on tenor and I could honestly, barely play it. I really struggled. But as soon as I moved to the two and a half, just things opened up for me. And I really found that I needed that 2.5 strength in order to marry up with the mouthpiece that I was using because the aperture, as I say, um, was retained. That initial aperture that you get when you put on a new reed against the tip of the mouthpiece. And then the whole experience, whole playing experience completely turned around and I could just contend with the whole setup. And it was the same on the alto. So I wound up using the 2.5 strength on the alto, whereas you would normally think, yeah, three would be the obvious go to strength. Uh, but it wasn't, it's the two and a half that I used there, and that's what you heard me demoing, and it was the same on the tenor. So just a really important point for you guys, because you know, if you're used to natural cane, that the tip opening does change quite quickly just with that natural jaw pressure. So pay close attention to the strength chart, um, which we will have available on our website. Um, there's only a small range of strengths. Um, it runs from strength uh, two up to four, and there's even this in-between strength and um, three plus, very similar to the uh, reserve reads that Daddario produce. But I think that for the majority of players out there, um, you're gonna be finding that you're gonna be winding up around the, the earlier strengths, the softer strengths, in order to just find that fullness of tone that you might be used to with your natural reed cane. Um, so, you know, you might even find that strength two is fine for you. I was actually jamming on the two on tenor for a while and considering using it for this video because it was just very natural. Um, but I think overall, I just found it a little bit too soft and sort of bright sounding. And as soon as I moved to the two and a half, um, things just fitted into place much more for me. Okay guys, so just in brief, you've heard me kind of concluding throughout, but just my final thoughts on the Ven Reed overall. I absolutely love this reed. I think Daddario have done a really great job with it. It's got this sort of elements that you get in the natural reeds, brought together with the synthetic reeds elements that give it that consistency. It has that natural heart and warmth in the sound, and as I mentioned before, that sort of sizzle and the texture in the sound. And it hits all the spots as well, the altissimo, the subtones, the full tone, the whole gamut. So a really great product. Um, and I think that for you guys who like synthetic reeds, the first thing to do is go out and order one of these because you will absolutely love it. If you don't play synthetic reeds up to now, I thoroughly suggest that you go out and buy one anyway because I still think you'll absolutely love it and you're only gonna be spending a few quid in order to invest in one of these. So pay attention to the strength comparison charts to make sure you get the right one for you but I really don't think you can go wrong by buying one of these new reads. They are absolutely excellent.